Hello, my name is Dr. Sanket Pisat. I am a consultant gynecological minimal access surgeon practicing in Mumbai, India. The initial two and a half minutes of this video contains information about the normal anatomy and functioning of the female reproductive tract, which has the uterus, which is a muscular organ in the center where the baby actually grows, and a pair of tubes and ovaries on each side of the uterus. So there, is, there are two fallopian tubes and two ovaries and one uterus forming the female genital tract along with the cervix and the vagina. The interior of the uterine cavity is also known as the endometrium. It is here that the normal pregnancy grows. The two fallopian tubes open out to the interior of the uterine cavity through openings which is known as the tubal ostium. The sperm enters through the vagina which is shown by the green arrow and the ovum or the egg is released by the ovary which is marked in blue. The ovum then travels through the fallopian tube finding its way to the tubal ostium. Here somewhere close to the tubal ostium the ovum and the sperm meet each other and a pregnancy starts forming. Once the pregnancy starts forming in this area the pregnancy then drops itself down into the endometrial cavity or within the uterus and there as shown by the golden symbol is the embryo which starts forming. This is the normal view of the inside of the uterus which is a spacious cavity and has the right tubal opening which is seen from inside the uterus and exactly a mirror image of this same thing is the left tubal opening which is seen from inside the uterus. So this is what the normal uterus looks like which is a hollow muscular organ. On the outside, you can see the uterus, LO, the left ovary, right ovary, the left tubal opening and the right tubal opening. In a normal case, when dye is pushed through the vagina, blue color escapes from the cervix and comes out from each side of the fallopian tube to enter the abdomen, indicating that both the tubes are freely open. Patients with a T-shaped uterus have a narrow, constricted, T-shaped cavity as compared to the large and spacious cavity which is found in normal uteri. In the surgery, which is hysteroscopic metroplasty, releasing cuts are made on the side walls and at the top of the uterus from the inside to enlarge the uterus. In this patient, we see that there is a narrow tubular or tunnel-like cavity which is quite unlike the normal uterus shape and size that we have seen before. Needless to say, there is very less space inside this uterus and it is impossible that the growing embryo or the growing baby will be able to latch itself into this uterine cavity properly and grow well. Hence, the treatment for this condition is a surgery which is called hysteroscopic lateral metroplasty. Hysteroscopic lateral metroplasty means enlargement of the cavity using the hysteroscopic scissors. So gentle cuts are made on both the side walls of the uterus where the uterine tissue seems to have overgrown and gradually this wall is leveled until it reaches the level of the surrounding uterine muscle. Doing this hysteroscopic lateral metroplasty procedure has not only shown to improve rates of pregnancy in patients undergoing IVF, but it has also been shown to remarkably improve uh, the pregnancy rates in patients who have had prior abortions. So there is a significant decrease in the incidence of abortions after this hysteroscopic lateral metroplasty corrective procedure has been done. As more and more cuts are made, we see that the whitish area, which is the area of the uterus which does not have sufficient blood supply, gives way to a pinkish area with blood vessels that are seen and on the uterine surface. This indicates that the normal healthy level of the uterine tissue has been reached and if uh, we check, we can see that there are several blood vessels that are seen on this surface. This means that the normal healthy tissue has now been reached. Similarly, as we did on the wall of the uterus, enlargement of the uterine fundus, which is the top of the uterus, is carried out using the hysteroscopic scissor. 
Using the scissor ensures that there is minimal or absolutely no damage to the surrounding uterine musculature other than the intended area of surgery. So gradually releasing cuts are made and the uterus is made to fluff up larger than a size to what it was before surgery. Doing this also activates the endometrium by releasing certain chemicals inside which make sure that the next time the patient attempts a pregnancy, the chances of success are much higher. So this procedure we have already seen the lateral metroplasty and this is the procedure by which the top of the uterus is also enlarged which is known as fundal metroplasty. So two sides of the narrowing have now been corrected by surgery and now we move on to the third side which is the right lateral wall. So after two walls have been corrected we start with the correction of the right lat lateral wall or the metroplasty of the right lateral uterine wall. Again as the scissor is cutting the uterine tissue one is able to make out how hard the tissue is and it is this hard fibrous tissue which does not have blood vessels which is the problem because of which the patient is not able to get pregnant. Once this releasing incisions have been made now you can appreciate that the uterine cavity is significantly more spacious than what it was before and will be able to sustain a growing pregnancy. If you like the video, please click on the icon above to subscribe to our channel. Thank you.